Welcome to Unlocked, the world's number one Xbox show. It's episode 333 for February 15th, 2018. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, and joining me, James Duggan returning. Yeah. Couldn't, he, we couldn't keep him away. <laughs> yep. Especially with Craig Duncan here. You, you, what? you did it. I have all the Sea of Thieves questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're getting to that. Uh, Brandon Tyrell, good to see you. And to my immediate left is uh, joining us. You might be the, the the award winner for the furthest traveled to be on the podcast ever. Craig Duncan, studio head from Rare, uh, finishing up Sea of Thieves as we speak. It's, it's great to be here. One, as a fan, because I listen. This is my thurs Thursday morning commute into work. Um, I, I'm glad I won something by being the furthest. Because <laughs> when you tweeted, we might have a second get. I, I seen your tweet, and then I seen everyone go, oh, Phil's come in, or Mike Yabara's come in. It's like, no, sorry, guys, just just me. <laughs> just just Craig from Rare. Like, um, yeah, Mike was the smoke screen. Right. That's all. Just yeah, yeah. It was the cover for you. The red herring. Yeah. And, uh, but no, it, it's awesome to be here. And uh, as I said to you earlier, Ryan, like you guys have been believers and supporters Absolutely. Of, of a new IP that we're super passionate about. Yeah, we're going to talk a lot about that. And, uh, yeah, I just I just really want to thank you for coming down. You were you were in Redmond for you know yep. business stuff with with the big wigs, and you <laughs> you came down here just for us before yep, you right. before you headed home. So thank you so much oh, so. for doing this. Um, and I want to start. So last week, uh, or I guess two weeks ago now, you had yeah. uh, you had media in. Uh, we we, did. we foolishly have a UK office, which means it makes no <laughs> sense whatsoever for any of us <laughs> to know. fly from San Francisco to Twycross Se to go like see a, you. An error that does. Uh, yeah, so damn you to Daniel Krupa and Joe Scrabbles <laughs> and our UK team. They got to come see you, but w you guys showed them a lot uh, yeah. at that visit because you know the closed beta has already happened. A lot of us have obviously spent a lot of time with that. Uh, you showed off really exactly how the game starts with with picking a procedurally generated pirate yep uh, what you're sort of the con the context for what you're doing in the world about sort of finding this this sort of fold in the this crease in the map uh, of where sea of thieves takes place and and you even uh, talked a little bit and, and showed off privately the a little bit of the Kraken yep as well so uh, and then the whole legendary quest thing so what what was what was your takeaway from having media in uh, who've, who'd already played the game. Because, you know, we, you and I have talked, we went to lunch, yep. you know, about this this whole crazy three-year journey for you. But now, you, you know, as it nears the the end of the beginning, yep. before the well beginning put. of the next chapter starts, what was sort of your big takeaway from having the media in a couple weeks ago? Yeah, we've tried to, um, we've tried to manage expectations and build call it momentum, hype, whatever label you want it. As, as we've gone through development, right, like we've been very open. We've had our insiders play the game. We invited a 1,000 people to play Sea of Thieves in December 2016. Just get my years right. Um, and then we scaled our insider program, and, and we did E3, and obviously a lot of people got to play at E3, and then we did closed beta. Um, and what we've tried to do all along is kind of have this very open development ethos where we talk about things, but save a few surprises and delights so at e3 we could show something new yeah. and and again you know bringing bringing the press in almost the first thing i asked them was like hey who's played sea of thieves and you get everyone's hand to go up and it's like okay who's played in the technical alpha and some of the hands would go up and who played at e3 and and everyone's just on this different journey about how how much they've played how much they know so kind of with a new ip and yes, Sea of Thieves is pirates, but like, what's the IP about? What's the vision about? So really, like, my pitch to to everyone that came to the studio was, I want you guys to play the game, and it was awesome to read all the stuff that came out of the press visit because it was all people sharing their stories as you guys did on the last mm -hmm. podcast. Right. Really cool. Um, but the second thing is like, I want want you guys to really understand what Sea of Thieves is and what our vision is behind it and why we think it's special, why we're excited, and then. Naturally, because people have played it before, we want to show some new things because, like people, people assume what they've played is everything, yeah. or they assume what they've played is like one percent, and neither of those things are right. <laughs> mm. So, so we try and sort of set the expectation of like, hey, you know, the closed beta was there to test our scale, and like we put the gold hoarders in because we wanted to see how long it took people to go through the the kind of like guided goals for that and yeah. what the rewards were like and how often ships encountered each other and all that kind of cool stuff. But then it's like, that's the foundation and things like 
you know, we showed Krakens, we showed Skeleton Forts. Mike did a much better job than I will ever do on this podcast <laughs> talking about what it means to be a pirate legend in Sea of Thieves. Mike, our design director, and why players are there and what the lore of Sea of Thieves is. And and all, all it, it was really about making sure that when people write about Sea of Thieves and talk, like, and you guys do, do a great job at this, like, they're, they're as informed as much as they can be about what we're trying to do and the features and what we find exciting. Uh, what, I, I gotta know, so, I mean, as I'm mesmerized, I can watch this all day, by the way. It's, <laughs> it's if you're watching the video, the, we put B-roll up, so. Uh, but funny you should tell you that. I could watch this all day. That's <laughs> kind of what our stats show us that people do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you, you guys release some crazy numbers. I mean, I guess let's, I'll talk about that for a second before going to my, my next question is, mm. uh, you guys put out <clears throat> some stats publicly on. Uh, I think someone took a picture of a screen at Rare. That oh, was is that just what, our I thought internal. it was officially put, put it out like how, you know your your Twitch ranking and your yeah. millions of hours of views and all the YouTube and it I mean it was some really impressive numbers. Yeah. What, yeah. what with were you guys did it exceed internal expectations or what, what was sort of I mean obviously it's all good it was all it was all very high numbers but yeah. you know what was the sort of takeaway from the the uh, response to the beta both from players and viewers on streaming? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we've we kind of had people playing Sea of Thieves under NDA for a long time. Um, so we knew, and, and Joe and I have talked about this on our own podcast and, and through, uh, through press before, like we knew taking the NDA off would be a moment. Like we knew you said like, hey, go share your stories. Like, and, and honestly, like we're all really excited about launch. We were probably more excited about that as a studio. Like we, we're gonna let people play the game live and we're going to let them stream and make videos and everything we've always talked about is players are going to go on these fantastic stories and what's going to happen and when they share them are, are like are people going to watch them are they going to watch these videos and and kind of what happened was that and more and and it, like we saw more people come in people play for longer like we had some of the top you know, streamers in the world play the game. And even, and you, you can pull analytics, there's, there's tools where you can pull analytics on this stuff. And the reason we share the numbers is, is to validate our future stuff and make sure we share with the team what's going on. But even some of those streamers had more people watching their streams and they got more views on their YouTube videos on Sea of Thieves content. So you think about that, if you're streaming a game and you get 30,000 people watching your stream and mm -hmm. you get 70,000 all of a sudden. Yeah, so you're going to keep doing that. Yeah. That, that's it. So we, we <laughs> like, I've watched people play Sea of Thieves for two years in the Unreal version and a year before in our cranky prototype version <laughs> where we threw loads <laughs> of features in. Like, and, and I can still watch it now because I never know what's going to happen and what players are going to do. And, that, and we believe that. Absolutely. And that's what proved out in the beta. And that's why we got like every day of the beta, we have more people joining and more people trying to join and more people like t something like 25,000 people streamed content. Jeez. Uh, I mean, like, just anecdotally, I remember it being yeah. on every single like number one on Twitch on, and, on every platform. And, and in the studio, it's like, and you say, how much is design? How much is it? Like we, we wanted it to be a moment and people to watch it. Like, the email goes around the studios like, oh, we're in the top ten on Twitch. Yeah. And we're like we're like number eight on Twitch, number five or number five on Mixer, number eight on Twitch. And it's like, oh, we're number six. Oh, we're number four. And it's like, <laughs> oh, we're only behind League of Legends. Now. <laughs> and, then, and then it's literally like it's like, oh and then like we are the number one <laughs> The champagne game. court comes <laughs> off <laughs> and yeah. And then, Alexander wept for there were no more worlds <laughs> left. <to get> <laughs> and then, you know, email threads go around uh, like on a nice email thread with the Xbox L team feels like, hey, good job. Let's see how this plays out. And I'm like, yeah, it'll be day one and then it will fail off. And like, I think five days out of seven, yeah. we, we were like the number one watched game. So, I mean, it suffice it to say your expectations for the reception of the beta was just... Yeah, that totally eclipsed and by. on yeah. on a relatively small slice yeah. of content. Yes, as well, right. Yeah. That's got to be that's got to be a good feeling. No, then you got you got a lot more in the back pocket. Well, I, our constraints were: hey, let's keep it kind of like the tech alpha. Let's not put a load of stuff in. Let's like, and you, you predict this stuff. You go, hey, if it's only people from our tech alpha, from our insiders, we know there's like four hundred thousand there, and they've all kind of played before, so not all of them will show up. So maybe we'll like maybe it'd be a couple of hundred thousand, still pretty mm -hmm. decent scale. And then pre-orders, like hey, how many pre-orders will be at that stage? Are probably this, and not all of them will show up. And and every 
and there's not much content to, like but every, like we just proved all that wrong people like more people turned mm. up they played for longer they streamed they like which is just incredible like just such a for, i just i was just so proud of the team because everything we'd set out to do it was it was happening and it was just yeah. like oh so, awesome <clears throat> james you were we were having a conversation earlier and i think you said this was okay to Yep. To, to talk let's, about let's try it about yeah. you because you were playing on PC and you were, mm. you had a, an interesting observation about the play anywhere experience. Yes, my play anywhere experience was divisive. On the one hand, once I got into the game, mm -hmm. I couldn't tell who was on Xbox. I couldn't tell who was on PC. Right. I was playing with people in the office that normally we just don't play together because we're not on the same platform. Yep. I'm primarily I mean, PC and I have an Xbox, but I just don't. Really and that's play. the magic of playing. Right. Anyway. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Microsoft Store was definitely a barricade especially at the start. I heard your rant last uh, <laughs> podcast. About but that, that. that well, probably, I mean, you guys probably don't care because that's exactly what the beta is for, right? I mean, not that you don't care, but like, yeah. you're yeah. probably well, not would, losing too much sleep over that, right? No, we, we care when people have problems, <laughs> yeah. believe me. Um, it's particularly our community team and customer service sure. team that are dealing with that. Um, yeah, I mean, that's frustrating. Like, we, we have issues. We try and get them fixed. We try and get people in. And we our make good was like, hey, let's... Like we know people had trouble coming in. Let's extend the beta by two more days. Yeah. And, and of course you had people going like, oh, you should just extend it indefinitely. Like, can we just play all the way? To my <laughs> I know like, this we, is a hard question to answer, but how much of that do you feel is under your control? Mm -hmm. you're, you're locked into this platform and obviously it, it works on Xbox. And there were a couple of problems here and there, but I think it was a very... Um, a, a good experience in terms of getting into the game. And PC, you really had to, like, I, my, the, the literal answer to my problem was to cancel my, my pre order. That yeah. Was the only yeah. way I, and it was like, wow, I don't want to do that. But. <laughs> and it, I'm not, like, that wasn't the only way. And it, like, the, the, the thing with that issue is we didn't, we never, we would never have known about that issue until we hit that issue. Mm. And, and it actually, like, some of it was our fault. In fact, actually, most of it was our fault, which was we, we come up with something that sounds super simple. I won't go into all the technical details, but like if you pre-order the game, you get the black dog pack. Like, so you've all seen our adverts. Mm -hmm. like, really cool pirate outfit. Mm -hmm. like, you'll look awesome in the game. We, like, we think it's really cool. Look, looks incredible in the game. And so we go, hey, if anyone's got the black dog pack, they're entitled to the beer. Kind of makes sense, yeah? Mm. So we'll build the entitlement into this thing that we know only people that have got that, unless you're whitelisted already. So it's fairly complex entitlement management. And then for some reason that just didn't work. Yeah. Mm. So we had all these people and we, we, so our query is like, hey, you've got access to the black dog pack. You should be able to get in. And it, it just didn't work. So like they couldn't get in. When we realized that was a problem, we fixed it. But then you've already got all these people in this sort of state of if they came in the first couple of days. Yeah. So we then had to go back through all of their entitlements and like list them that they could go and play which is like this sort of continuous process till you catch up with the people you missed the yeah, first time. Yeah. So we were just sort of behind on that. And then like all things on social media, if people have issues, they want to vent about it. And, sure. Oh, for sure. And, and we want to try and fix them as quick as we can. So it's super frustrating. Didn't, you say about people canceling pre order like we I think we had under one percent cancellation. So I mean I as soon really... as the beta was over, like I, I re pre ordered. It was it was, a, it was not like, <laughs> man, I hate that I have to do this. I have to cancel my yeah. pre order because it was like literally I have to cancel my pre order to play the game. And as yeah. soon as I canceled it, I no longer had the um mm. your too early error and I was able to play. Yeah. And then I sorry you know, about re pre ordered like, after <laughs> that. But I, can, yeah. can you yeah. even ask Phil, can, can you can, can you even say like, hey, should we phone can him? Can we you have, put, you have a Phil <laughs> oh, should we phone him now? Yeah. Can, we, no, well, can we? Can you ask about Steam? Is that even? Is that like a non-starter? It's just like when you think about. I know you're part of the Xbox family and all that, but there have been other first-party games that have gone on Steam. It, it's not that simple. Like if you think I about it. Xbox Play Anywhere, Xbox yeah. Live, like Sea of Thieves has been built yeah. to ultimately allow you to play with your friends across Xbox Live, and and that's that's why you know. The Windows 10 version and the Xbox version, to your to your point, is like it's seamless. Like yeah. you, 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 until you meet someone in the world and you say, "Are you playing on PC or console?" Like you have no idea because they're just they're just another player. Um, and for us, like just having that community all be one community, all playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah. I think when you think about other stores and networking architectures and like it, that stuff. Yeah. Adding more there was, teams yeah. to the mix, adding more people. Yeah, I'm not even sure how we'd go about it. <laughs> there was one other game that tried that, uh, and it was uh, Gigantic, Motiga. Yeah. And they yes. had Windows 10 version and Xbox, and those could play together. And then the Steam version was 
PC only and Steam only and could not play with the Windows 10 and uh, Xbox. So it was like the Windows 10 audience was not there, right? Everybody on PC was going to go to Steam. But mm -hmm. I think for me, it was I had so many bad years of um, games for Windows Live that my mind immediately went to blaming Microsoft <laughs> <laughs> as opposed to like you could have done anything wrong. I was just like, ah, Microsoft, ah. But I, you know. The, the, these yeah, things are like, they're know. way harder to set up. Like when you think about like, particularly if you're trying to control access and the, it's not funny because people had issues, but the issue that hit us with closed beta will never be an issue yeah. that is a launch issue. Because the only reason it was an issue is because we were trying yeah, to constrain that's, the access. Actually, of, that was funny to me. Yeah, I was like, "Well, <laughs> like, this is exactly what betas are for: is to find these issues out." But the only fact it was there is because it was the beta. It's, so. it's because we were trying to chicken in the egg. So not be clever, but just try and restrict <laughs> access of, for what it was. And so. I think James, you were we were talking earlier that you, you didn't feel like there was too much of a competitive advantage on PC or disadvantage on console. And uh, what was the number you quoted so, me? So the stat, and I. Right. Um, so Ted uh, Timmons, who's our PC lead, so we we get we collect a load of data. And former stuff. Uh, Lionhead, for, guy, former right? and, and and great guy, uh, in, and he's led led the charge for us on PC. I think by our data, you are four percent more accurate against skeletons. Huh. Than you a sure there's not a, a zero after? <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear. So I played on Xbox and then went to PC, and I immediately felt. I mean, that's my platform. That's where yeah, I play. Yeah, and maybe it's more I that could, <laughs> I could dance around folks. But but I also just skeletons, thought the 4 skeletons are, are not players. players. Like they're sure. running right at you, shoot them in the head. Uh, absolutely. But, but also, mean, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go well, to, to that regard, like you and I, like I, I was playing on my One X at my desk and you were playing on the PC. And I, we both, I mean, I feel like everyone has that moment in the game where two ships pass in the night and then you just <laughs> see that glare of the scope pop yep. up on the ship across from you. It's like, all right, so here we go. Let's do this. Uh, and I lost probably four out of five of those fights. Okay. And I'm, I go over to James and... Um, you know, James is just like picking flies out of the air with his sniper <laughs> rifle, and I wonder, like, man, maybe this is a maybe this is a PC game for me. So it's really interesting to hear that stat that yeah. uh, there might be a competitive advantage, yeah. and it's called the eye of reach, by the or way. Or really, basically, no competitive advantage <laughs> yeah, well, is what. Well, there, there's there's says. so many things that you need to do to get into a PvP scenario, and there's so much skill aside from just aiming that you need to yeah. have in order to engage that. It's not Call of Duty in the sense where like everybody's. Uh, putting their aim skill up against each other all the time. That's mm -hmm. not Sea of Thieves. Right? Yeah, and and we purposely, like, we haven't built what you could, like, and got to be careful the double meaning of Twitch here, but a, a Twitch-based game, like, yeah. as in a reaction, accuracy, pixel, pe like, it's a bunch of pirates in the world, and they have these old weapons that are quite not that accurate. I mean, even the Eye of Reach, which everyone calls a sniper rifle, which isn't a sniper rifle because they weren't invented then. <laughs> Sorry. Is, is a... Um, yeah, branded. <laughs> My apologies, Craig. <laughs> is, is a long-range rifle yeah. with a um, spyglass sellotape. To, like, if you look at the model of that in third person, yeah. it's a it's a spyglass sellotape to a um, to a long-range rifle with a crack in it. Miraculously I, I was <laughs> I was going to ask, so uh, how quickly did you decide the crack would be the crosshair? As so, soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, that's really smart. Yeah, right? and it, I can't remember, like, I remember you guys talking about it last podcast, yeah. about there's no UI in the game, which right. makes you feel immersed and, yes. and, and very deliberate Thank design goodness. decision. Problem is, you put something in, like, a range mm -hmm. weapon, like, again, the easiest thing to go do is put a reticule in, which actually would make PC players have more advantage, would make people play the reticule rather than the, like, hey, am I holding this pistol right? right? Um, but we just thought the crack was a really nice yeah. touch and a way <laughs> yeah. to do it with in the context I mean, of It game. certainly beats putting a piece of tape on your monitor, which used to be the solution <laughs> for old games. So, uh, Craig, what's, what is the craziest thing that, that filters its way up to you from something a player did in the beta. Like, what's what's like the craziest? Because, I mean, I certainly, the Sea of Thieves account was retweeting some stuff. There was somebody, uh, like some group that got like 80 people together on a yeah. ship or something. But what what's, give me like a crazy story or two. For yeah, me. and there's been there's been so many. And some are skill-based, some are silly, where someone, and uh, I, I'll, I'm not going to give credit because I'll forget people or I'll give the wrong person credit for doing <laughs> something. Um, someone shot themselves out of a, like we've got a an outpost up on the top of a hill and they shot themselves out of a cannon, had their grog straight into the doorway of the tavern, and then took a drink. <laughs> which, <laughs> like a Bud Light commercial. Yeah, yeah. It, it is like like a pig. Dilly dilly. My uh, oh, no. my my favorite one though um, was someone said, um, "I'm I've made a YouTube video. I'm going to swim across the world in Sea of Thieves." 
Like I kid, I kid you not. That so sounds like a terrible idea. <laughs> Sharks how do, would end how do you not get eaten by a shark? Yeah. In okay, so, one. So this so this gets better. So so I I kind of see this on Twitter and and they they they've there's a YouTube video. It's two and a half hours long, <laughs> and he said he's going to start on the on the east of the map and he's going to swim west. So I'm like I'm scrolling this guy's Twitter and I go back a couple of days ago. So not only does he do this, he tells people two days before. I'm going to swim across the map in Sea of Thieves. I'm after a crew to sail alongside me oh, no. and shoot sharks. Beyond shark. <laughs> oh, that's so like, good. And, and this is like, this is a real thing. I, I'm not making this up. Go, go fight. There is a two and a half hour video. Wow. Like, this guy dies three times in the first two minutes. Like he gets eaten <laughs> by sharks, like literally. And then they get into their rhythm. The person on the like little two man sloop, yeah. the person on the sloop sniping sharks. He's swimming along. Two and a half, like, Go find it. I don't know how many views it's got, Jeez. like, but two and a half hours of wonderful water from a player view as you swim through it. I, <laughs> he he did it. Sounds peaceful. That's yeah, it's like quiet so, noise. I'm actually really curious about that because there are times where I was playing the beta, okay, and I'd be in the water for seemingly ten minutes, shark free, no problem at all. And then there were times where I'd be swimming around and got attacked like three times in thirty seconds. It's near the shore. Yeah, it's near the shore. I know. So like, I would always stay near the water. But I, I was really curious. Like, are there is there some magic number going on behind the scenes where if you're in the water for long enough, like you need to see a shark? Yeah, I mean the designers tweak it so yeah. we've obviously got things like shipwrecks and we've got different regions of the world where there's different water patterns deep water yeah. shallow water like if you're in shallow water like near a resource island or an outpost what we'd class as like a civilized mm -hmm. area probably not so much but there's definitely regions of the world where shark country that, that number is a little bit yeah. higher yeah. Uh, so your chance of and we've tried we've tried to make the world learnable like mm -hmm. generally our principle is like you should be able to learn an island. Like so if you get a riddle and it's on Devil's Ridge, you should be able to go, oh, I've been to Devil's Ridge. I think I know where that landmark is. Mm -hmm. Or I know over time that region is prolific with sharks. And I know this. So if you spot a shipwreck at the moment, because no one's played the game enough, apart from maybe our, our sort of insider audience, you see a shipwreck, kind of all you do is go, oh, there's seagulls up in the air, there's a shipwreck, maybe there's treasure on it. Long term, maybe someone's got the domain knowledge of going like, oh, there's a shipwreck there, but the last yeah, time I was yeah. in that area, it was like teaming with sharks. So does that mean we go in all armed? There's four of us go in. So just the the world knowledge informing how you go and run at particular challenges, riddles, like we think people will learn, that, like it's an authored world, mm -hmm. but we have random elements to make the adventures seem different and make the ingredients different. Mm. Were there any unexpected learnings from the beta, or, or was yeah, it mostly things, things broke that we <laughs> didn't think would break? Um, the f is this a fun one? So when I when I hear people and with a new IP and something like Sea of Thieves, we always try and just like tell the vision of what Sea of Thieves is and try and be as clear as we can about that, so people people don't think it's something else. It's not like you know a massive PvP arena mm -hmm. game where everyone's just trying to kill each other, yeah. or an adventure game where I don't bump into like so we try and. That's why we say every other ship's another crew of pirates and tell that story. Um, when people talk about the game, and again, th there's depth there that people, I think, don't realize. So people will say, hey, when, when I'm uh, fetching treasure quests or treasure chests, I get a voyage, I go out, I get a chest, I go back to the outpost. Mm. And if I even I'm describing that to you now, that kind of sounds boring. It's awesome because you're digging up treasure and it's like it's very cool emotionally. But... What we actually see players do once they've played a few times is not do that. What they do is they go get a load of voyages, they spend all their money on voyages, and then they go out and then they start chaining together yeah. voyage to voyage to voyage to voyage to voyage. So you get these scenarios where they have 20 chests, 25 chests, which <laughs> if you think if you're out in the world and you come across them, that's like, that's like lottery winning. That's oh, yeah. insane to me yeah. because I start sweating anytime I have one chest I on know, my boat. But like, I got to get this back to an outpost. I know. But, but what we see is the more people play, the more they'll take those risks, mm -hmm. which means like we think the way that's naturally going to play out is, is you'll get players that will do the risk reward. Do I go back to an outpost? Oh, like if there's someone patrolling near that outpost, do I just carry on? And, and we want all these just really interesting player choices. So... Yeah, you know, the expectation was, hey, people will do those short, I get a chest, I want to get it back. What we actually see is people doing much more 
progressive chained yeah. quests so they'll actually bring back bigger halls one of the things that hit our services so one of the issues we've seen was like the gold balance not checking up uh, correctly mm. so you won't get in your gold reward mm. part of the problem with that is if someone cashes in like 20 chests all at the same time and then times that by you know 100,000 players all doing it at the same time <laughs> that that little service we've got that's going hey player you know player Ryan that's you know cashed in a chest that has to because all this stuff's all server side and server authority that server's just going like yeah, just getting me just bang, <laughs> bang 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 but like and and that's the stuff where it's like okay that got over Rome everyone got their rewards but mm. like it just queued yeah so then people didn't get the immediate rewards so they didn't get the UI pop up to go hey well done and you've cashed out. it yeah and, and it's like oh I did work and so that sort of stuff we, we would never have known had we not have had a beta with that many players playing in that way. Are these sort of similar reasons why you, I mean, this weekend you're doing an, another stress test? Yep. So we've got big scale tests this weekend. So we think we've done all the work to remedy that fix and any other stuff we observed in yeah. the beta. So this weekend is like, hey, can we go get more players in a shorter place of time mm -hmm. to go do kind of the same stuff and then hopefully we won't have those issues but but this sorry this isn't an open beta this is everybody that already had access right. to yes. the previous round right yeah just, just be you, so if you were in the uh, technical alpha is that correct yes yeah, so if you were a uh, technical alpha player mm -hmm. or in our insiders you had access to oh. the uh, closed beta and if you pre-ordered you had access to the closed beta so the the entitlement that you had will get you access to this scale test um, and our hope is we hit because it's only 48 hours, we'll hit a bigger concurrency than we hit mm. across seven days mm. of our beta. Yeah. And then hopefully either our services will cope with that or just other stuff will break explode, yeah. and we'll know and then we'll fix it and we'll <laughs> right. kind of rinse and repeat. So you were talking about um, players like stringing together 20 chests and that's a really cool emergent thing that happens. <laughs> yep. Oh, that, those old yeah, MMO yeah. habits that don't yeah, die. Right. <laughs> uh, but is there like, so I think when it comes to showing off your character, showing off yep. your ship, which Sea of Thieves has a very heavy emphasis on. Yep. You know, there was like the blunderbuss, and that was probably the one piece of vertical progression mm. from the uh, the beta. But the aesthetics and what you're showing off, there's some stuff tied behind reputation. Some stuff is just gold. Are there any items or hats or really cool looking things that are tied to like, hey, if you turn in 20 chests in under two minutes, <laughs> maybe you get this awesome hat. Like, a, like achievement based. We, right. We've been very careful to. Uh, not to over reward mechanical based progression in 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 the way of like hey go kill 100 pirates get yeah. this go cash in 20 chests at the same time to get this i think they're cool for achievements mm. i think the danger you've got particularly in the game structure like sea of these once you start rewarding that intrinsically you you really start over informing that's the way to play sea of these right mm. yeah exactly like, even if i put a stat in the menu of sea of these that gives you a track record of how many pirates you've killed. Some players, not all players, will intrinsically go, hey, I want to, I want that stat, that high score. We've all grown up playing games with high yeah. scores. Yeah. I want that to be the highest number it can be. I want that specific reward. However, we do like the idea of like campaigns and time-limited things where we can set specific goals. And we, we ran one of these over Gamescom where we did a treasure hunt in the world where we released clues in our community and mm -hmm. people could go in because we ran a tech alpha at the same time as Gamescom and find skulls in certain locations of the world and triangulate on the map where they were. Then there was a shipwreck in the middle where there was a certain chest. So we can do that kind of stuff or... Or even, you know, mysterious, like classic pirate trope, mysterious tr stranger walks into a tavern. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> He's got a map. Like, that map has a specific <clears throat> reward or, like, so we can do that. And we actually like the idea of that as a service-based game. Mm -hmm. So rather than make it a do X, get X, yeah. like, hey... And again, I, I try not to give any of the team's ideas away prematurely, <laughs> but, you know, mysterious pirate walks right, in, yeah, yeah. Has, sure, sure. has a thing. Like so, and go do uh, it. There's got to be an open beta happening one more <laughs> one more ago before where you just where you I would think you would want just anybody to come in. Just you know, crush it kind it. of yeah. would effectively be your demo because the more people that this is definitely a it, you get it you really get it when you play it mm -hmm. kind of game. So between between that and the I, the the desire to probably try and 
break the servers before the game launches, I got to figure you're doing an open beta between now and March, right? But what, March 20th. What's been consistent since day one is when people have played Sea of Thieves, they've got it. Like, so that, that statement you just made is absolutely <laughs> like, whenever we've yeah. rocked up at E3 and people have gone like, eh, I'm not sure. And then they play, smile, whatever. Right. Um, we, we're taking it one step at a time. So it's really like scale test this weekend, like regroup Monday, where are we at? What scale did we hit? What's bro? Like, and, and that's really like, because we, we've got like, everything we're doing is all about making sure day one is, of course. is as, you know, challenge free, risk free as we can. And that that's like finishing features, finishing balancing, testing scale. Like we're just in this thing where we're making a thousand decisions a day about all these things all at the same time. Um, and anything around like a beta or scale test is, is all to get us to that point. So get the scale test out of the way, then see where we're at. Fair enough. Some of my coolest moments in beta were finding chests that were not part of like yes. the mission. And uh, once I realized that that could happen, because I played maybe five hours before I found my first one, yeah. and I was just like, oh, wow, I can just find, and it's a captain's chest, too. Yep. Um, so then I got to thinking, like, there's one faction in there, right? There's not going to be chickens and pigs lying around. There's not going to be random skulls. So does it stand to reason, and does it make sense, that the random stuff that is just placed around the world will be, uh, you know, it was only one-third of what it will be in the full launch Yeah. I in the beta, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely one faction, and finding, like, don't be so sure everything's random. So some stuff is placed, and some stuff is mm -hmm. placed very intentionally. Um, I don't want to kind of spoil too many surprises sure. about some of the, like, there are areas in the world where it's definitely worth exploring, yeah. and you will find stuff. <laughs> and we want that to encourage exploration. Um, for the gold hoarders, that's treasure like you know our, our narrative to the gold hoarders is hey they've got these magical keys that unlock chests they've got this you see them all being covered in gold because that's what mm. they that's what they crave and so you know we've got this loose rare funny lore around why they exist and why why <laughs> they're they the like only people so much? yeah why they like why they like gold and and gold. why they're the only people that can unlock the chests and yeah. why they have magic maps that appear and that to, there's all reason for all this game game reason um when you talk about things like the merchants, that will be a lot more um, in-world stuff. So you say, like, hey, there won't be chickens and pigs and things are, and snakes. Like, there will be. Well, and yeah, that, that's what I mean. They, yeah. they're, they weren't in the beta because that faction didn't exist. That's Therefore, right. you didn't have anybody to turn those into. Yeah. So I guess, like, the condensed way of asking that question is the frequency of stuff that isn't tied to my immediate voyage yeah. will be increased in the full there, game. There will be more emergent... Like, we... Like, think of the trading companies as guided goals. Like, hey, you and your crew are going to go find some treasure, go on a merchant run, mm. kill a evil pirate skeletal lord and bring his skull back. <laughs> what happens when you're on your journey? We want to stimulate with emergent things. So things like you spot a cloud that's glowing like a skull in the sky, Ooh, and that's a skeleton cool. skeleton fort, and we know like players will get drawn to that, yeah. particularly players like James that like yeah, want yeah. to <laughs> go, you know, do, like dominate and just have that really kind of you know combat focused experience. Or you could find a message in a bottle, like washed up on the beach, and that can have a special riddle or a special map that maybe has access to treasure. Or you can, you know, come across like maybe that chest was left by another crew. Like maybe they, you know, it's a trap. <laughs> they're I've just never they're behind that. the rock. I've, they're in the cave. It seems like I would have to wait a pretty long time to yeah. be like captain's chest. All right, I'll just be in this. Yeah, bush. I know. But uh, so on the possible. on the shore with yeah. you guys in the bushes. Well, yeah. some of my favorite Sea of Thieves adventures though are normally when you get the chest, get um, your ship gets sunk. People end up on the like they take the mermaid. So which is like our game design thing. If your ship gets sunk, right? Just so like being marooned on an island sounds cool when you're in a game design <laughs> meeting. No, this this <laughs> happened to me my very first voyage out. Yeah, it, it sounds cool and it's good the first time. But what sometimes happens is we we didn't want the gameplay exploit that you could take chests through the mermaid. Yeah. So if you yeah. catch sure. so if you get a chest, you can't go get through a mermaid, get back on a ship, cash it in. So you do get these occasions where your crew will go through a mermaid to go get another ship, and you're left on an island ah, with a chest, protecting maybe more than one chest. Oh, like okay. I've I've had sort of five or six things, and then you're literally like spyglass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I hope that ship that's coming back is Ter my crew ship and not, yeah. and not someone else. Survival game. Yeah. Like um, 
So you mentioned pigs, chickens, snakes. Uh, you guys have touched on pets. Yes. As a, as a future, so can I can I have uh, <laughs> a, a snake wrapped around my neck? Can I have a a parrot or or maybe even a a, a literal scurvy dog at my side? <laughs> at, at some I knew you'd go for the dog. Yeah, of yeah. course. Um, I want that. I will give you. I will give you money. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we. And this is this is again it's the hard thing around expectation setting, which is that there's a there's a million things we can go do. Like of course there is. Um you know, we have a talented team of people, they have a set of priority lists, there's a lot of stuff we want to land for launch. And you know, people ask like, Hey, you're gonna go run this ongoing service and like, you know, like one of the things people ask is like, Hey, like what does that mean for, you know, spending and digital business yeah. or microtransactions or however people want to word it? And and we like for us, like launch was all about like, let's land a great experience at launch. Like, and I didn't, honestly, like, I didn't even want, and this is part of the reason of inviting people like yourselves and press into the studio to, to have these conversations. All I want people talking about at launch is, hey, isn't Sea of Thieves awesome? And didn't we have great stories and great adventures? Um, ongoing, we want to go add content. Now, obviously, you know, running big studios isn't free. Like, we, we don't want to have DLC because we don't sure. want to segregate users, but we... We think of things that ultimately would make sense to see if these don't, you know, unbalance the game, give players advantage. Is is anything that we think isn't in the spirit of Sea of Thieves? And pets was one of those things. Again, when we sat in a meeting and drew some stuff on a whiteboard, it's like, oh, pets would be cool because you don't need one, but mm -hmm. it's kind of cool. And if we can make it a fun social thing, like I could, you know, steal your monkey and throw it in the throw it off the side of the ship. Not my the monkey. Water. That's fine. <laughs> Not my like, monkey. <laughs> like, and, and you think about the emergent fern and the story. Five bubbles. <laughs> throw a puke on his monkey. Like, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but you think about all the ingredients that are in Sea of Thieves and all these fun stories. Like, something like pets just, again, just give another dimension, another set of things that, yeah. and, and, you know, then what, you know, Greg and Mike and, and the design team will do is go work out what's, what is a pet in Sea of Thieves? Because mm. it wouldn't, wouldn't be the first game that's put a pet in, mm. but you know, part of the rare charm and what we do is like, hey, what, what does a pet in Sea of Thieves mean? And how is it different? And how does that invoke different sets of fun? All right, well, if I can't have a pet on day one, <laughs> can I at least have a solution to joining a match-made game if none of my buddies are online and getting voted into the brig literally in three seconds. I never had that problem. I want to go on record yeah. and say I never <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't either, actually. So the, the brig, brig's a fascinating conversation because we actually put it in to, um, to prevent griefing. <laughs> the irony. I know, oh. it's hilarious. Okay. Um, so you like, you vote him off the, the boat. Yeah, so it's like, or hey, I'm- literal I've, island. Well, yeah, yeah. They're, no, they're on the boat, believe no, me. I, I'm saying you can do this to somebody who's causing problems. Yeah, like I've got someone just, on my crew, they are, I mean- Grabbing your chest and throwing it overboard yeah, constantly. Or, <laughs> yeah, like game, gameplay griefing, like, okay, how do we how do we go address that? What's cool about the brig is you can use it in a role-playing kind of way. Yeah. Hey, like James crashed the ship again. Like you're in the brig. James, that's twenty minutes. <laughs> twenty minutes in the brig. Hang um, you're at AFK. <laughs> but but um, you know, so so that was the kind of intention of it. Yeah. Like something fun, but something that you could put someone in and mute them if they were being toxic or and the worst case toxic, abusive or rude or whatever. Um then like we have heard instances of that. So I think the immediate fix, and we'll keep looking at this stuff post-launch, like, you know, we've had whatever, three, 400,000 people play. We haven't had a million people, two million people play. Um, like the immediate option to that is let people have three players. Cause I think the scenario you're in is like three players are already playing. There's a mm, fourth yep. slot open. Yeah, yeah. I showed You're on the fourth slot. They don't know who you are. Um, or maybe they do know who you are and they bring it in. Like, <laughs> they, they either way, it's him. They just want a quarantine period. Yeah. <laughs> and just and maybe maybe that's the way they've set up. So yeah. so the kind of fix for us is like, you know, which isn't in the flow at the moment, is like number of people you've got, ship you pick, go into game. True. Like, so that'll be the day one fix for cool. that. Um, and then like things like griefing and toxicity, like that's just something we're, we're going to have to keep yeah. working on and keep looking. They are pirates. Yeah, there is an element but, of toxicity to being a pirate. But I, I am not defending putting people in the brig. But there is an element of like, <laughs> there is an element of like whimsical fun to playing the game unintendedly through the tools that you have. Yes, AZ comes to mind where I saw great videos of people would like handcuff other players and make right. them. You know, give me your pants or I won't let you free, Drink you know? Bleach or whatever yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That was your Friday night. That wasn't day Z. <laughs> <laughs> Thought we weren't supposed to reveal personal information on the podcast anymore, Ryan. 
An- uh, yeah, so stuff like that. I think there's a cool little, I mean, as a guy who played MUDs for years, there's yeah, a yeah. cool element of like using the tools that you're given to like, you know, give people a hard time, but also understand that it's sort of a give and a take. And, and the thinking was like, hey, you know, we want Sea of Thieves, and I've said this on record, like we want Sea of Thieves to be this welcoming multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. We want people to play it in the right spirit. And and our, our maybe naive, but you know, design and creative thinking was if someone does something wrong, if you lock them in the brig, they and you can talk to them or throw buckets of sick on them or whatever you're going to do, mm-hmm. taunt them with music. Like that's their opportunity to go, hey, sorry, like I'm 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 going to reform and I'll I'll come back and I'll play and I'll <laughs> Has be okay. Has that ever happened? Yeah, I'm curious. <laughs> Question. Um, but like, or you know, if they want to quit, they quit. But yeah. it's it's better that than like yeah. I don't want I, anyone having a badge of honor. That I actually thought it disconnected you because every time we put somebody in the brig, like if they were blowing up gunpowder barrels, they would just get in the brig and then disappear after. Like, well, so that is them quitting. Because they quit they, out, but, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, I think that's better than forcing someone to quit. And this this is sort of like a, a an organic merging of like what I was talking about and, and sort of it feels like the intended uh, use of the brig, which is if you want to be involved in that kind of stuff, like if you want to, you know, be in the brig and have people chide you and taunt you and like demand answers before they let you out, like that's that sort of like fun emergent role playing that you can get into. But if you want to quit out, like yeah. another another voyage, another ship is literally just a matchmaking session away, right? Yeah, Unless that's they it. lock you in the brig. <laughs> yeah, having, having a riot. That, that's exactly it. that's a great way of putting it. And then you're in the Twilight Zone where it's yeah, just every ship is a brig ship. <laughs> so we were speaking about adding pets and we were speaking about a little bit about post-launch content. Yep. And I know like, man, I always have this grimace on my face anytime I ask a developer about post-launch content mm-hmm. before the game has come out. You, you think just, you have a grimace. Yeah. So I think, think how we I feel, know. yeah. That's just where my head is at. And yep. it's very interesting. There's uh, a lot of motifs in this game that translate to other massively multiplayer or emergent multiplayer games. Yep. Um, that have this straight up vertical progression like World of Warcraft, like EVE Online, when yep. they have an expansion or a content drop, it's a very um, easy, like, okay, level cap is now 120. Gear is now I level 900, you know, all this stuff. Sea of Thieves is this kind of emergent mechanics-based playground that's not HUD heavy, that's not numbers yep. heavy. So what does post-launch content look like? Is it making it the world more dense with stuff or is it a, a new or area or bigger? I guess just philosophically, up? yeah. 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 More so than specific details. Right. It's so that I think there's two ways of thinking. And we we have, we haven't talked super detailed about this because like again, one You're step a little at a busy time. Right now. <laughs> like day one react to what happens day one and make sure we do that and then let's go land the next thing. So there's two ways we're thinking about it. Like the ultimate goal of the game at launch will be to become a pirate legend. So which then poses the next question, well, what do I do as a pirate legend? We showed some of the press that came to the studio, like the, and I think this is on the internet now, um, like you get access to the pirate hideout, like, and that's super cool. Like definitely go check out, like, like so 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 cool like i just i've got an image of it in my head now <laughs> i love how excited um, you are for your own game no i uh, that's really but, cool but this it's is really like, awesome to see yeah. but i've played like i've played and watched sea of thieves so much and it still yeah. it still gets me excited and like and then it's like oh what do i do as a legendary pirate and then but the great thing about being a legendary pirate in sea of thieves is if i'm a legendary pirate and you guys are on my crew i can take you in the pirate hideout yeah, hey. because and on, I, on legendary yeah, uh, cause, voyages, right? Because I've got the access. So That's really cool. Nice. Which, again, is back to that removing barriers rather than creating barriers. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. hey, we can go play together because we're friends and we're going to go play Sea of Thieves together. Not because we all basically got to legendary pirate status all at the same time right. with the same equipment, with the same... Like, I can't think of how many times real-life friends have been excluded from stuff like raids because they forgot yeah. to do... Yeah, I mean, de- of daily. Destiny, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so we've been, like absolutely intentional about that as a design pillar. So what that means is that I think there's a couple of things. One is more things for legendary pirates to do. And one of the things I think we talked about a little bit with the press is like persistent ship ownership and do you allow people to then, because once they've built a pirate legend status themselves, do they then start to think about ships and what's next yeah yeah, like is there a notion of gangs or get like you can sort of see where that goes once you've got a lot of legends in the world. Mm -hmm. The other part for me, which I'm probably more excited about, is just more ingredients into the into the emergent world, which is if we've got 10% of the players that play Sea of Thieves or at legendary, like our legendary pirates, obviously what I don't want to go do is have 100 people at Rare go just make stuff for legendary pirates. <laughs> like, cause, cause, and that's like, and that's okay because they're super engaged players and stuff and sure. we will absolutely, but 
I th- I think what we don't we want to avoid is pe- people going here's a load of stuff consume it here's a load more stuff consume yeah. it here's a load more stuff we want to keep Sea of Thieves being emergent and replayable yeah. so if we had something and another example we had in the prototype early on I don't, don't even know where this is on the roadmap is like a speaking trumpet so a speaking trumpet is literally as you'd imagine <laughs> a a big cone yeah. that. So our, pro- horn. so our proximity chat currently works within a radius, oh, that's which is so awesome. Cool. Add a speaking trumpet in. Yeah. I can then shout to a ship over there, and then when you think about leather into merchant quests and like, hey, we're on a quest. Have you seen any speckled hens? Because we're trying to get some for the merchant company. Like, so just something as simple as that. F you, Craig. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <That's me>. yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> makes makes the game more fun and emergent for it. And, and whether it's that or pets or yeah, you know more time based campaigns, like I talked about earlier, like it's that stuff that I think we can continue to enrich what Sea of Thieves is. I mean, we know we know it's replayable. Like mm. as you said yourself, we had a one trading company and and stuff missing from the beta, and we still seen people put in 15, 20, 30 hours EVP baby into it. Yeah, but it was all about it, for me. It's just just it's re, but it's 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 replayable because every time you play, something different happens, and your adventures and stories are different. So, so I, but do you do you see Sea of Thieves as like, I mean, you want it to be this emergent storytelling game for you know however long it goes. Uh, I think it, I think it was Destiny One where it was on an Activision earnings call. They said Destiny is going to be around for ten years, right? And everyone was like, uh, "What does that mean?" <laughs> uh, so with Sea of Thieves, do you see it as a platform that you continue to extend with content, or do you envision one day Sea of Thieves Two comes out? Sea of, T- sea of Thieves, yeah, it, three. It, it's a great convers- it's a great question that I haven't got a firm right. answer. Like I said to the press last week, and I was completely honest about this like i'd love to do a press event at rare five years from now right where we're still talking about suit of things like yeah. that just as you know personally professionally just as to say like hey we built something that people are still playing in five years just sounds like a cool thing yeah that, that we've built so and i think we've got potential that and then when you think of things like you know game pass and pc specs and new customers into the xbox ecosystem and like i think we all think about like day one for sea of thieves 20th of march like it'll be new for people then but there'll be someone that buys an xbox console right. two years from now that sea of thieves will be new for them day one then and and that that's the interesting thing to me or someone that signs up to game pass six months from now and right. Sea of thieves is in there like it, it's it's that that like we're going to continue to get players all the time and we're going to continue to enrich the experience. And and I'd love people to be playing Sea of Thieves in five years. That'd be incredible. You don't have to tell me where it is, but tell me, <laughs> tell me, give me an example of a really cool, like rare themed Easter egg. That's maybe, a, maybe it's like a gold banjo statue at the bottom of a, an ocean okay. somewhere. What, because you guys have to have loaded the game up. I, you know, you've talked a bit in the past about, uh, sort of memorializing like uh, Events. pioneer players yeah, yeah. and, and SP, but actually but yep. how about how about old rare games there've got to be some easter the eggs HMS in there perfect dark <laughs> well it's funny you should say it. no it's not that <laughs> um, so you know rare used to be called ultimate play the game yeah way back okay have you been shipwreck bay in sea of thieves in the beta you should recognize <laughs> it i mean Lo- maybe yeah loads I don't, of shipwreck. I don't know that's well the one with the name. arch and the, uh, the, the busted ship <laughs> oh no no no, no it's the one with like the it's like this crazy dense archipelago and there's islands everywhere and you could sharp rock oh yeah, and yeah, yeah there's right, right, right. there is broken ships so yep. and i hope i get this right now and someone in our community is going to go it's not on shipwreck bay it's on another <laughs> island so <laughs> again i've just A so booty so much um there's a broken ship on Shipwreck Bay. I think it's on Shipwreck Bay. If it's not, I apologize to anyone that knows my game better than I do. <laughs> it's been a long week. Um, there's a ship there called the Black Witch. And uh, you go on there and you can go explore. So the first ever pirate game made by Rare by Ultimate Play the Game for the Commodore 64 back in 1983 or something like that, I'd probably get the age wrong, was called Black Witch. And it was a pirate game, and that ship that's on the cover of that Com- Commodore 64 <laughs> box, with the pirate that's in that game that's being cool. in a um, picture frame in the captain's cabin of that oh, ship. That's so cool! Nice. That was Rare's first pirate that's game. That's cool. That's what and I'm that's, talking about. That's in that. Did you? Uh, like that. Did you pull deep cut? Yeah. Deep cut. Speaking of of deep cuts, did you pull specific elements from like pirate inspirations, whether it be 
you know, the, Car the Caribbean, the Goonies, the uh, Pirates of Blackwater, like any other stuff. Yeah, I mean, the the team like absorbed everything, and we we wanted to put our own stamp on it. Yeah, uh, and and again, it's that romantic, fantastical pirate, and like not as dark and gritty right, as yeah, Black yeah. Sails, but not as silly as I think some stuff have have done. So, like the the team absorbed all. Like Joe uh, Joni, our exec producer, took the whole studio to a theatre to see the Goonies. Like, I think we were like seven months, eight months into development. Um, and I love the good news, by the way. Like, yeah, just, it doesn't. And, and, it's, yes. and I think we're of that age where, like, it's, it's just one of those kind of um, incredible films. People in the team, there were some people in the team hadn't seen the good news. Wow. There were some people in the team were still at, like, junior school. I saw it last year. Yeah. Well, the, for your first, first time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm curious but, to see, uh, seeing it as an adult if it changes it because I saw it as a kid. And it yeah, was, and, oh, it was still, and, it was still and, that, that movie's yeah. special. And, and I've shown it to my kids and stuff like that. But yeah. we took the whole studio there, and then Joe gave this awesome, rousing speech about like, hey, like this is the tone of Sea of Thieves. This is you and your friends going on adventures together. That's this so is, cool. this is, and and then he kind of went one stage further, and he's like, going, we're the, we're the Goonies. Like this isn't, it's not just a metaphor for the game. This is a metaphor of like what we what we're doing together. Like we're on this adventure. Like we're going to go do things that like people aren't expecting, and and we're just like this is this is what he, he Joe is much, Mikey. Yeah. He did a much better <laughs> job than I, but but he basically did the we are the Goonies, and but I think Goonies is a great sort of like tonal, just go, you know friends having fun yeah. on this awesome adventure awesome. with against adversary and meeting other yeah. people that are jerks. So how long till we get a truffle shuffle emote? <laughs> oh boy. That's how you have, that's how you have to get on my you can't do you can't get on my ship until you do that. Get out of the brig. Do it. <laughs> that's you get locked in the brig until you truffle shuffle. Yeah. That, that you was go. your problem, right? That, that, I yeah. didn't truffle shuffle. No, but that was that, that was a serious question. Uh, I'm starting right. to get to the point where I actually could pull off a pretty you good truffle both, shuffle. You and me both, man. You and me um, both. So pulling pulling back a minute from sort of the bigger first party picture. Yeah. Uh I when I was trying to think about this, I think you're the first major new uh, first party IP. Uh, Qu uh, Quantum Break doesn't count. That was second party. That was not. That was you know yeah, Remedy. Pub that, that, that was yeah, a, yeah. Uh, And even Sunset Overdrive. You know Insomniac, not owned by my. You're, you're the first major new first party IP in a long, long time. Is awesome. there? Is there any pressure with that? You know, is <laughs> well, I mean, but maybe what? Well, give me a break. Oh, I do. I, 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 do you I, wake I, up in the morning to have the hopes and dreams of an entire platform on your that, shoulders? It's, that, it's that, relevant, especially in the in the current context oh, of you know, sure. Xbox has no games, quote yeah, yeah. unquote. That, that is absolutely not the way we think about it. Like for me, and like the opportunity of what we're doing as a brand new IP for Xbox, like and brand new IP for like this is like this is like Rare's first new IP in a long time. Like just like the opportunity of that. Like we don't, it, it's kind of funny and we this came up in a few interviews with the the press at the studio and it's like, hey, do you worry about this? Or do you compare yourself to this? Or do you worry if like it goes wrong? And and that like, you just, you wouldn't do what you did if that's the way you walked into work every day. You just go, hey, we're making this great new IP. It's, we've got a fantastic opportunity. Like I, I've spent the last three days in Redmond. I've seen like I was in 343 and they were telling me like they were all playing the beta mm. and like mm. and having a great time and all of the Xbox LT and met with Aaron Greenberg yesterday go through all the market and stuff like they're, they're as all excited about it as we are and and it's it's that it's that opportunity to just go do something that you know makes Sea of Thieves as well thought of as a any other first party IP or or any rare game that Rare's made before like that's that's our guy and it's not it's not because I think people talk about pressure as like it'll succeed or fail, mm. and I don't think it's that. I think it's like you know, I mean, people will love sea, people already love Sea of Thieves, so there will at least be some people at launch that think Sea of Thieves is amazing and the best game they've ever played, and they'll love it. And there'll be some people that Sea of Thieves isn't for, and and our job's to keep being clear on what it is, selling the vision, getting people in, making it better, like, and and we'll do that. And we've got a great opportunity, and it's it's almost like. The bit I feel pressure on is like how how do I make Sea of Thieves the biggest opportunity it can be, mm -hmm. not hey is Sea of Thieves trying to solve some problem that's not mine, like to solve. It's not yeah, my yeah. my problem to solve. So how much do you think the community impacts that and community feedback? You obviously have a very set vision. There's a lot of very clever design stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, 
in the game, but you know how much of like what the community has said and feedback has actually affected the way yeah, that safety it, has progressed. It, some in a in a um, very non tangible way, like I think we talked about before around uh, shipping counter frequency, like how often you see other ships, when you see other ships, how often do they turn into encounters, either friendly or non friendly? And everyone says, oh well, they're all non friendly. They they're <laughs> not like again, we see people making friends and all that sort of stuff. So um, that stuff is the, is the feedback we get from scale testing and feedback that we could never get in any other way. Like, because we literally get metrics of like, hey, this is how often ships were within two miles of each other. Yeah. They could see each other across tens of thousands of players. So we, we know what those metrics are and we tune for them. Um, I think on individual things like... Um, AI is a good one, like in balancing and threat levels. Like, hey, you guys have toned up the skeletons on the um, on the Order of Souls quest, like, and now they're brutal. Or, like, we had um, our data analytics team did a graph. This is the other awesome part of my job: a graph by yes. island, <laughs> by riddles, by time it took to solve the riddles, mm. <laughs> and then stumped on one and then plotted that across, which was basically like, hey, if you got a riddle of this many steps on one of these larger islands at this point in the game, the average time to go solve that riddle. So, if you think about designers balancing uh, voyage recipes, which we call them, like having you know the first few things you do be like hey go find the big rock with the painting on mm. like versus something that is a very complex like go into a cave system find an altar raise a lantern play music in concert to go set blah 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 like what riddle step to map size to complexity like all that stuff like again it, it's just things that we would be literally guessing if we made them without the community. <laughs> if there's some like big incentive that the community puts on you to, if there's some big banner they all get behind, like we need a six player ship. And that's just <laughs> the number one post on Reddit for months and months and months. Is that something you're receptive to? He wants a six player, <laughs> want a six player ship. Yeah. yeah. The, it, the way I like to think about it is like, what's our source of truth? And, and our source of truth are, is really like, what's the, the top, top 10 things? Like, and it, and it normally kind of balls into that. So, like, and we all, like, we could all come up with our own set of 10 things. And sure. and we all, we've seen this, we all work in the same field, that even the things people shout about the most isn't necessarily the most important thing. Yeah, James. Um, <laughs> and, it's machine and, guns first, then yeah. six-player ships. <laughs> and, and those that shout louder, and, and again, more combat-focused players will want more combat. More exploration-focused players will want more right. exploration. People that are interested in social want social things to do. Like, so we get as many requests for dice in a social space as we do for a six-player ship, oh, for example. That's really good. And, I'm on Reddit. <laughs> How are you doing? Six player um, but, but the reality is, like, it's, you know, with the team we've got, we just got to make sure we, we do the stuff that, A, we think is the most impactful thing, and then use the community to keep us, like, no one asked to be shot out of a cannon. Like, I've never seen that on any feedback ever at any time during Sea of Thieves. Like... They, like even in a, all my design reviews with the team, I never said, "Hey, wouldn't it be awesome if you can shoot someone out of a cannon?" Like the team did it. I actually went, "That sounds dumb," and then I <laughs> shot myself out of a cannon. And I'm like, "Oh, no, you guys are geniuses." Game designers <laughs> got a game design. Yeah, that, right. Uh, that's it. Well, and, speaking from experience, Craig, you were wrong. Yeah, it I, is amazing. It is, but it's and amazing. again, it's the sort of thing where that something that maybe sounds yeah. like something you want to go do or not do or fix. Like there might be and there might be reason. And we talked about it, like. Sh you know, shipping counter frequency is a fascinating one because you get feedback of everything from like, hey, just go put me in a damn arena with a load of pirate yeah, ships yeah. and let me shoot them There's right through enough. to There's too many. Let me explore the world and have no one around because I just want to go and explore and take the world. And the reality is, our vision is like we want that moment where you see another ship on the horizon and you know it's another group of players, and we want it to be frequent enough Your that it starts doing this. That it <laughs> and and my like my heart's sure been doing that every time I've done it for three years. So yeah. I, I I know that's a cool thing. Yeah. Yep. Um. And that's just like it's it's that where we've just got to go. Hey, the feedback's there, but. Do, uh, do you have internal teams dedicated to the social aspect, the combat aspect, aspect the exploration aspect? We, we've tried to map features to that through development a few times. Mm -hmm. And whenever we've done it, it's been a bit of a yeah. cluster. Like it's it's just one of those things that theoretically sounds like you could yeah. do. but You really need everyone in concert to understand like what's best for the... Yeah, the, the best way we found of doing it was we've got this thing called a wheel of emotions. <laughs> so... Um, 
and I, I can send you guys the image of it. I, yeah, please I, do. I, I think <laughs> it's cool. Um, and it, it was developed by this guy called Dr. Robert Plutchek, and it, it was basically every emotion's got an opposite. So if you've yeah. got rage, you've got harmony at the opposite, or you know, serenity or um, fear. Like, like would be would be they're probably not quite opposites. But and but what we used to do is we do a play test in the studio, and we get everyone to write their stories in the same way you did on a post-it note, and then put it on the wheel of emotion what they felt <laughs> that's so funny man so a little happy sad yeah face. So, so they go like hey i seen this awesome sunset and i felt serenity or my crew came back and got me from that island i felt trust God, i would love and, to see those post-its and that wheel together yeah and, and just to see what people and know. what you find is you go put a load of like we put the blunderbuss in and we scale the skellies up and we put sword back combat in and it tends to go a bit red rage yeah. anger mm. battle like where a lot yeah, of James, are. and you put musical Rage is my serenity, and and, and, you, and you put musical instruments in, and you get laughter and happiness, yeah. and like so for a sea of thieves, it was important we always had a balance of all of them, uh, and that so it's a bit, it wasn't it was post, post assessment, yeah. but that was sort of keeping us honest that we had a balance of things. Before we let you go, because uh, we've kept you an hour already, I wanted to ask you about Game Pass. Yes, because yeah, yeah. Uh, what. When did you find not 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 when but but like how did you find out that your game was just going to be available to anyone who subscribed to Game Pass on on the day of release uh, you know on the, the day the game's out and and what was what was yours and the studio's response to it because what, you mean we're in Game Pass <laughs> not yet <laughs> uh, oh my God. <laughs> not um, today March twentieth I think because that I mean that that really changes potentially changes the dynamic for you because you're not relying on necessarily on just people paying $60 for your game. Yeah, the, I think to be clear, like these things don't, and we're in this unique position as first party studio. You know, yeah. part of our job is to make great games that, you know, ultimately drive people towards Microsoft platforms and services like Game Pass or Xbox Live or like that's our job as first party. So these things like they, they don't happen to you. Like we were involved in a ton of conversations okay. with the Game Pass team. Well, that's team what I'm curious of: is, yeah. is it if you're involved and a how you're involved? Absolutely, and it and it's really like you know, here's our here's our ambition for Game Pass, and this is what we and and again, I love Game Pass as a just a consumer thing. Like, I mean, again, if someone had told 16 year old me I could pay 10 bucks for my paper round and get 100 games, like, and, and I was out in Brazil at the Brazil Game Show and. Yeah, someone say like they've saved up for two years to buy a console and buying a game is like three months wages. Mm, yeah. Like, you know, Game Pass as a consumer value is is incredible. So I I get what I get our vision for Game Pass one hundred percent and and for me personally, I can like it aligns to my values and, and the things I think are important. So then you just get like what's what's first party's role and and we got involved like very early in those discussions, and it was like, hey, what, what do we think about putting first party content in Game Pass day and day? And and then as a studio and franchise owner, you go, well, what does that mean for me? And what it means for me is I'm going to get more players, like probably a lot more players. I'm going to get people into Sea of Thieves that I probably wouldn't have got, like sure. maybe people that yeah, don't play multiplayer games or don't fancy pirate games or haven't got heart and soul or like whatever reason they've opted out of Sea of Thieves. But like, I, I know it's good for Sea of Thieves. So, so for me, like when someone says, hey, do you want to go do this? Like, it's like, yeah, of course. And then it's like, hey, do you want to be first? I'm like, well, Sea of Thieves has been first at a lot of things. <laughs> um, like, yeah, let's, let's go. Let's be first. And we, like, the reality is we don't know how it's going to play out. You know, and I don't know, like, does it mean we're going to sell more, sell less? Like, but all I really care about is how, how many people are playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah, your, your metric mm -hmm. is your player base, yeah, right? right. More, more people playing Sea of Thieves the healthier Sea of Thieves is, better the player base, more stuff we're going to get. Like, that, that's just goodness. So, Can uh, I ask a quick housekeeping thing before my friend on Discord is going to kill me if I don't ask you this? <laughs> so you were saying the, the Black Dog Pack being tied into beta, and then there's Sea of Thieves. And now when I canceled my pre-order, then re-pre-ordered after the beta was over, I noticed I didn't get the Black Dog Pack. With that, am I still getting that incentive? Or is that... I just, yeah. Do you want a male customer? No, no. <laughs> I actually do know the answer to that. So part of the way we fixed that entitlement issue was we basically had to just almost like nuke that, the the thing that was the black dog pack. Um, but that doesn't mean it's gone away forever. Okay. That, that just means that's what we fixed because the quickest way to fix it was to do that. 
And then what we do is we know everyone that's got entitlement to that, so we can actually send them a code or re-entitle it to them through through the dashboard. Right. But to be uh, clear, if I pre-ordered hours before it launched, yes. still getting that. Yeah. Okay. The, the Black Top Pack was something we very specifically said, like, we want people that pre-ordered the game, which should, you know, technically is your most engaged fans that wanted to get in early. And, um, like, for them, just having a way they could show up that looked really cool in yeah. the game yep. um, was something we felt strongly about. So if... If anyone's got any confusion that the Black Club Pack, they haven't got it, they will have it by launch. And if they don't, that there's a on CFEs.com, there's a support thing. If anyone ever does have an issue, Fantastic. they can raise it. We'll deal with it. Thanks for answering. All right. Very Before cool. we let you go, tell me about this book a little bit. This has been on the desk here the whole show. You may have noticed it. This is a Sea of Thieves... Uh, journal of uh, it's tales from the sea of thieves yeah. i didn't know about this until you handed me a copy before we went on the air which means we haven't done a nearly a good enough <laughs> job in telling people <laughs> yeah, about so it so well, tell me go. about this yeah. um so we the, so there's a couple of motivations here like one um you know the lore of sea of thieves i think as i've said before is really important to us i think you know rare games have had lore they've had history they've had you know characters and and you know like even our skelly bad guys or the gold hoarders or, you know, the, the the ghost ship captain. Like, it's important to us that there's there's fun lore and backstory, and we know that's what people expect of, of a rare game. And while that has been light in our alphas and betas, like, we know that's important. But I think the opportunity we see of these reinforcing what I said earlier is the, the opportunity for players to affect that and the early players being the pioneers and founders of the world and then as... Mike, our design director, puts it, when we start getting pirate legends, we're truly in the golden age of piracy. Mm -hmm. So he's way more romantic than I am. <laughs> um, but this notion that you've got these legendary pirates that people know, and then you've got new pirates. And, and while they haven't got power differences, and ultimately a blunderbuss is a blunderbuss, a pistol is a pistol, like just the status of that. What the law book is, is some of the backstory of you know what Sea of Thieves is, why it's there, who's there, why these trading companies have come, how they're trying to exploit it, what you're there as a pirate doing, you know, why there's mermaids in the world, like all of that stuff, which we think is just not every player wants it because some players will just want to go on a pirate adventure. And But for some players that want it, we want to make sure like that's there, but it backs up the world. But if people want more, they can go and read that. What's cool about it is we actually recognize some of the stories from our early community tech alpha <laughs> players in there. So there are players and pirates talked about in there that are real people that That's were so some of the cool. early voyages. I really love cool. that. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, again, would love to go do a law book a year post launch yeah. that talks about the stories that people actually had that were real player stories. And like, you can get this, uh, you said you have, you have a merch store on the Sea of Thieves yeah, website. So, yeah, it, so it's, I think there, I Sea of Thieves shop dot com or something. And it, we, we made a very conscious decision to be very clear about just like when you buy Sea of Thieves or get it through Game Pass, it's it's XPA, so it's it's Windows 10 or or Xbox. We didn't do special edition, limited edition, pirate legendary edition, but the the merch store is kind of that. Like there's an art book, there's a law book, there's those gold t-shirts you've seen the cool rare kids wear. Yeah. Um there's I think there's a coin on there, there's a tankard thing we're doing. Like there's a there's a load of yeah. stuff. And there is some in-game oh, tech. I don't like, think we've announced the, the controller. Yet. Oh well. Oh, we just have what? Yeah. tankers. <laughs> Suddenly everyone looks over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we good? Um that's fine. Um but you know, it's that kind of stuff which, you know, you could do in a limited edition and we could go do a two hundred dollar thing yeah. or it's like hey the, there's a merch store and if you like if you genuinely want to sit here with a see if these tankers i'm just going to own it now um <laughs> smart that's the way to go. <laughs> just embrace like, it that's th that that's cool and you should be able to buy one and and awesome like is, will there also be a Sea of Thieves bucket for me to vomit in after too <laughs> yeah. much frog from my tankard? Yeah, we. The amount of people <laughs> make that yourself. The amount of people that role played literally in the streams and videos yeah. of the beta in it's full pyra. It is a lot like, of fun. They were using Sea of Thieves as as a role playing, a larping mechanic, a larping. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Canvas, basically. It's awesome. I love it. And drinking as well. There was some people drinking, which we don't condone. But no. So. <laughs> no booze. Respond. All right. Uh, there, honestly, there, I'm going to let you go because you have a plane to catch. I do. Yep. And there wasn't. It turns out it was actually a pretty quiet week of Xbox news. Uh, so we'll we'll catch up on anything we deem important next week. 
Um, we'll get back to trivia next week too, and we've got the full regular crew here. But Craig, I want to thank you so much for, it's for been again a pleasure for coming quite literally out of your way to uh, <laughs> to take a, a southern detour before heading back to the UK and to yep. Rare. Uh, it was a pleasure having you here. Uh, so we're going to look for the stress test this yep, weekend. This weekend, forty-eight hour run. We can get back in the game if if uh, you were already part of the closed beta, uh, and then of course after that we'll see. If there's keep, anything keep follow, else, yeah, keep open following beta. our challenges. Yep. Uh, or keep following our challenge. No, not challenges. Channels. Mm-hmm. Um, follow cthes.com. Follow us on Twitter. Like we'll we'll keep updating what we're doing. Uh, and I, just thank you to you guys as well. Like I say, you guys have been believers from the start. From it's fun play, as hell. I mean, that's played E3. I, that's important to us. We, we, the, yeah. we have not. And I think I speak for all of us here. I mean, it's 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 rare. Pardon the phrasing. Oh, that that we have. <laughs> let me go. Just let me ha- let me have this. It <laughs> it's not often. That we have that kind of just grin-inducing reaction to yeah. it. Like there are a million great games every year, especially at E3. But it, like the the when we played that game for the first time, it at was E3. it was something special, and and it still continues to be. And I I can't wait to play more. March twentieth, March twentieth on uh, whether I want to buy a disc, which is kind of weird because you gotta bring it home and patch it anyway. But yeah. you know whatever if that's your thing. Uh, or uh, or get it or through Game Pass. Buy from the store or buy yeah. on Game or buy via, or subscribe to Game Pass. Yes, and you'll get the game. So, <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. best of luck in the final Thank like you. thirty days here before before uh, the game launches, and we'll be on there. And like I said, we we fully intend to uh, to do the show probably hopefully that week. If, not, if one of us isn't busy with the review, that is. But yeah. maybe two birds, one stone kind of thing could happen. There, uh, I think it'll probably be the latter, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, we want to do the, 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 this podcast from inside the game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, maybe like Joe or somebody could stop by and we yep. can talk we, to them. That'd be awesome up until we get fired on from a cannon and we have to start <laughs> over. <laughs> but that's that's what makes the show great. That's true. Yeah, I can be the one who ganks you guys. All right, take two. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so James. Fun. Craig, thank you so much. No, seriously. it's been a pleasure. It's been thank a pleasure. Uh, Craig Duncan, studio head at Rare. This has been Unlocked 333, and we'll see everybody again next week.